today we're going to learn how to fold. Imagine if I just did every tutorial in that voice. That'd be kind of awesome. Hey guys, I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're going to learn about folding. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold a piece of paper, right? You just fold, fold, fold. I don't remember exactly how this goes. Three, I have marked. Because you will eventually unfold, right? And then, in the order that you went in, you'll take yourself a straight edge, right? A little straight edge kind of deal, and a Sharpie or something else. And we are going to draw lines, and I marked them with numbers, right? So that's fold one, right? And then fold two will be here, and it's marked. And you can see it's going to be marked across both the front and the back. And so on and so forth. I can't really see all of them, all, all of them while I'm looking at you guys here, but there we go. So that's what we're going to do. Then you're going to take this. You're going to scan both sides of it. Or you're gonna do like I did and put it up against the glass, have your nice wife hold it because you uh, forgot to actually hook up your scanner in the new studio and your baby is asleep in the room that has all the equipment. So, that's one way to do it. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out our comp size based on the ratio of the piece of paper. So I'm using an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So that's the ratio on the left side here. And I'm trying to figure out what the height of the comp should be if it's 1920 pixels wide. Obviously it's gonna be taller than the normal comp. You can also do it the other way if you wanna put uh, 1080 up here and then put X down here. You can find out what width it would be and it'll be thinner than the actual comp. All right, and then we just cross multiply across the equals sign and then it's just simple algebra from there on out. So we get 11x equals 16,320, divide that by 11, and x is approximately equal to 1484. So our comp size will be 1920 by 1484, and it'll look approximately like this ratio. So I took this comp size, and I made my new comps. And as you can see, it's a little bit off, but that's because I didn't scan it for one, uh, for one and for two it was hard to see because I had to put a white piece of paper on it so you couldn't see into the building. This one is obviously a lot closer. So you put your two scans in there face up. And that's it for our base comps. These will eventually be replaced with whatever you want to fold. So this will be the front, and this will obviously be the back. So I didn't realize this when I originally recorded the tutorial, but you actually have to flip this uh, negative on the X direction, depending on how you flip your scan. And uh, then it'll show up correctly throughout the rest of the project. It's because all the pieces that flip over will actually be reversed, so I forgot to do that. So the next step is to make a new composition. This comp has to be a lot bigger than our main comp because we're going to put our uh, stuff in here and rotate them. So we don't want anything to get clipped off. So I'm going to call this thing base rotation front. And I'm going to make it 3000 by 3000. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to move that into there. And I'm going to drag my front layer here. Zoom out. You can see no matter how I rotate this thing, it's not going to get clipped. So what you're going to do, it's going to zoom in a little bit. Bring your rulers up with Command R and slide a ruler down. We're going to rotate this until that ruler goes straight across our first line. That's pretty close. I'm going to nudge it with a down arrow. Say somewhere in between there, 48.5. Make sure this comp is also kind of long. Uh, I have this one set to a thousand frames. Obviously my front isn't long enough, so I'm going to go in here and extend it. And we're going to time remap, so that's why we're making this thing so much longer. And then we'll go back to base rotation, and we will extend that. So that's step one. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to duplicate that comp and call it base rotation back. And I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to click on back, click on this, hit command option forward slash, and that will replace that. Save it. Go back into base rotation front. So I'm actually going to rename this comp that we're in folds. Because what we're going to do is pre-comp all of these things, and this is actually going to end up being our main comp at the end. So we're going to pre-compose this, and we're going to do move all attributes into the new comp. And then I'm going to call this base rotation front. All right, so our first order of business is to go to our mask tool, and we are going to drag a mask to here. It should snap right on there. We're going to duplicate this layer. This mask is still selected right here, so we're going to hit G to get our pen tool, because again, and then we're going to go off to the side, hit command. You should get this kind of cursor, drag around both, click, hold shift, drag it down. That allows us to go up here, click 3D. We only really need that one to be 3D. Hit Y for the pan behind tool. We're going to move this up. It doesn't really matter anywhere it goes on here. It's going to be on this line. It's going to snap. And like I said, it doesn't matter 
where you put it on the line as long as it's on the line. Then we're going to open up rotation and it's going to be X rotation and we are going to fold it down 180 degrees. So I'm going to set a key. I'm going to move to 100 on my timeline, 100 frames down. I'm going to move this key there. We go back here, set it to zero. So you have a 100 keyframe move. Unless you want to go really slow, this should be enough to time remap however you want it. As you can see, it's going to fold down. Our line is going to match up. If you've drawn the line dark enough, because of the way this folding is going to work, you should be able to see it connect like that. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to bring the back, replace it. As you can see, it's a little off. So in some, in some way, my scans are off between each other. But that's okay. So what we're going to do now is go over here and you see where it kind of flips. This is obviously the middle right there. So we're going to chop that one there, chop this one here, and it'll flip from one to the other. So another thing I like to do is take the exposure effect uh, under color correction here and set it to zero there and then set it here to be like negative one. And what you can also do is go here on this one if you really want to and set it to go from negative one to zero as it flattens back out. So it kind of shadows itself as it closes up. You can also do that with lights and all that kind of stuff, but I don't like to bother with that if I can do it way quicker this way. You can also go through and put a drop shadow or something else if you want. So that's it for the first fold, but we have to make a new null and rotate this to set up for our next fold. So we're going to parent all of these things to this null, and this null is going to get rotated. And we're going to move our line down until it's closer to there, and we're going to nudge this just like we did before. Let's say seven, four and a half. And then we're going to save, and we are going to pre-comp this and call that fold 01. I have a folder over here because I like to keep my stuff organized and I'm going to throw that in there. So we're going to do the same steps that we did before. I move this down, draw a new mask, duplicate this layer, bring this mask here down. Okay, make this 3D, pan behind, move it up there. Open up rotation. I'm going to make a keyframe here. So now this one's going to rotate from 100 to 200. So we're going to go to 200. And we're going to make this 180. So it folds down. Just like before. Hit V here. Duplicate that. And as you notice, there's no back. So what we actually have to do is make this fold 01. It's going to be fold 01F. Because that's the front. We're going to duplicate it. And then there's going to be a fold of one back. And since this is only going to show the back of that thing, we're going to make all of these things back, base rotation back. And just to make sure we're doing all of this correctly, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put a shape over the black. And we're going to make it red. And I'm going to multiply it down. Uh, I'm going to fade it a little bit. Just so we can see that a little bit. But you can at least tell it's different. So I'm going to go back to our folds comp. You can see my mask here isn't right, so we're going to move that over just a little bit. And because of that, we're going to have to fix it down here. And actually, uh, well, I can't copy that one. I can copy it to the other one, though. I'm just going to get rid of this because we haven't done anything to it yet. I'm going to duplicate it. So as you can see here, that flips over, and it's red. And it shows the correct side. And then this flips over, and uh-oh, it should be red here. So the reason we just made that back fold is that. All right, so we're going to save. Then we're going to do what we did before. Move this until it gets to its halfway point, which is right about there. I'm going to crop this top one and crop that one. And I'm not going to worry about adding in the shadowing yet. So you can see our next fold is going to be number three right here. And we're going to make a new null. Do the same thing we did before. Parent this to that and rotate this until three is in the proper orientation. Then we're gonna select everything and hit Shift Command C to pre-compose. We're gonna call this Fold 02 Front. All right, so we're gonna duplicate the Fold 02 Front and move it down here. Duplicate that, make a Fold 02 Back. 
And then actually, since we're not gonna use the uh, the actual rotation action of this, because that's not where this is actually being used in the other comps, we're gonna delete this, just extend this out, and then turn that off. Change this from 01 front to 01 back, and then save. I also have these set to alpha add, just in case we get any kind of weird things in between. I'm gonna go back through and add that. Change all them to alpha add, and there's that. Go back to our folds comp. We should have that fold in one way, fold in another way, and we are ready for our next one right here. So this one's gonna be from 200 to 300. So we're gonna set this to 200. All right, so that's basically how you continue the rest of the way. So we're gonna keep going and uh, do that until all of our folds are complete. I'm just gonna time lapse this part real quick and we'll come back when it's done. All the folds are done. Uh, you make a new null and then what we're gonna do is go back to the beginning here and we're just gonna eyeball it back to where it goes. Uh, move this up here. Zoom in a little bit. You could go back through and figure out exactly how far you rotated it. As long as you only rotated it like even normal numbers, it shouldn't even matter. All right, so there's our unfolding and there's a corner missing over here. So what I'm just gonna do is go backtrack. It's gonna be in one of the front folds and it's probably where I didn't make the mask big enough. So make sure that you make all your masks quite large. Remember what this is, it's 84. So we're gonna set this to zero. Go to this layer right here. So you can drag this down straight without it getting weird. You could just pull it out as long as you don't modify this edge, but it's easier just to do it that way. So then back to 84. So now we should be able to go back to folds and we should have a full piece of paper here. This one has a similar issue, so we're gonna do that. There we go. I'm actually gonna put this all into a fold 05 too. Fold 05. So that'll be the final fold. So let's call it that, final. Final fold. All right, so now all you do in this one is time remap this layer. So click here, command option T. And so I'm gonna do it every 10 frames. Instead, we're gonna go 100. And then another one over here, we're gonna go 200. Another 10 frames, and we're gonna go 300. And then another 10 frames, and we're gonna go 400. And then another 10 frames, 500. And I believe that's the last one. There we go. Go to the end over here, kill that. So now if you go through and do this, so you go there, it folds. So now you just go to your layers. So I'm just gonna bring in a logo real quick. So I didn't really realize this when I did this technique initially, but actually what we do here is instead of having the back with the fold over it, because that would never show, um, we want the back where it would be cut up as it goes along, right? So we're gonna go back in here real quick, open up two, get rid of the top fold, because that's what you would actually see. Go to three, get rid of this top fold. Go to four, get rid of that top fold, right? So now if we go back to the folds, I know there's a lot of comps, so now you see it folds properly. All right, so I'm gonna go through and make this look a little nicer. As you can see, we got these lines in here and that's because alpha add wasn't on everything. So I'm gonna go do that and I'm gonna put some shadows in and we're gonna come back when it's all done. And fold, final fold. It's the final fold down. And there you have it, I put a drop shadow on them uh, so that they split up so you can kind of see it up in here like where the different layers overlap. And uh, it actually turned out to be the exact same angle and I think that's because technically all the rotations were from the same angle. So it's kind of an annoying setup but once you have it you can do whatever you want with it. You can take these, flip them all, so that you actually unfold something. So to be able to do something like this in After Effects is kind of neat. I've actually used this technique before to make a paper airplane that unfolded into another animation. So it can be used for kind of cool effects. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. I am Joe from Workbench, and we'll see you guys next week. Good day! <laughs> Bye.